Dear beloved brothers and sisters, the time is near when the first secret of Medjugorje will unfold. And when it does, the inhabitants of this blessed town will be the first to witness a profound, shattering event. This event will not only disrupt the physical world, but also tear through the spiritual blindness that has clouded the hearts of many. Our Lady, the Queen of Peace, has forewarned us through Mirjana, and her message is urgent. This coming disaster will force every soul to look at life anew. Eyes that once saw only the comforts and distractions of the world will be opened to the harsh reality of eternity. And yet, amidst this unveiling, a sobering truth remains, only a small remnant, perhaps as few as 1% of Catholics, may find their way to heaven. As Mirjana revealed, the first secret will be a disaster, not just in terms of material loss, but as a spiritual earthquake that shakes humanity to its core. In that moment, the people of Medjugorje, who have been living under the protective mantle of Our Lady's apparitions for decades, will be the first to experience this shock. But make no mistake, the message extends far beyond this small town. The events to come are not merely warnings. They are divine interventions meant to awaken a world that has become numb to the voice of God. This disaster, permitted by God, is an act of mercy, allowing the world one last chance for conversion. Those who survive this initial trial will have their spiritual eyes opened. Some will see clearly for the first time, recognizing that their lives have been focused on the fleeting and perishable. But others, those who stubbornly cling to sin and the ways of the world, will remain blind, even as the scales fall from the eyes of the faithful. In the wake of the first secret, many will ask, how could so few find salvation? The answer lies in the nature of sin and the widespread spiritual lethargy that has overtaken even those within the church. Jesus himself warned us in the Gospel of Matthew, enter by the narrow gate. For the gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction, and those who enter by it are many. For the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life, and those who find it are few. Matthew 7 verses 13 to 14. The vision of Mirjana reminds us that this warning was not merely a figure of speech. It was a prophecy. Many Catholics today live under the illusion that attending Mass occasionally, going to confession once or twice a year, or performing a few good deeds is enough to guarantee their place in heaven. But this is not the truth. The narrow path requires complete and radical conversion, a turning away from sin, a rejection of the world's values, and a wholehearted embrace of God's will. The problem is not merely big sins like murder or theft. Many Catholics fall into spiritual complacency through the sins of pride, sloth, and lukewarmness. In the book of Revelation, Christ warns the church of Laodicea, because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. Revelation 3 verse 16. Lukewarmness is rampant among Catholics today, who claim to follow Christ but do so half-heartedly, allowing secular culture, ambition, and comfort to erode their faith. Pride is perhaps the greatest barrier to heaven. In our modern age, pride takes many forms. Catholics who rely on their own reasoning, who think they can bend the laws of God to suit their personal desires, are in grave danger. Pride makes people believe they are justified in their own eyes, that they can redefine morality. It is the same sin that led Lucifer to fall from heaven. Many Catholics engage in prideful behavior when they reject church teachings on life, marriage, and morality, believing they know better than the magisterium. This is a direct affront to God. In today's fast-paced world, it is easy to become distracted and neglect our spiritual duties. Catholics are called to be vigilant in prayer, to attend Mass, and to frequent the sacraments. But how many fail in these simple duties, preferring the comforts of leisure, entertainment, or worldly pursuits? This sloth is not just laziness. It is a spiritual death that leaves the soul vulnerable to Satan's attacks. Sexual immorality, rampant in the modern world, has infiltrated even the lives of practicing Catholics. Pornography, contraception, cohabitation, 
and casual relationships are normalized, even excused. But Our Lady's messages, as well as sacred scripture, warn us that the sexually impure will not enter the kingdom of heaven unless they repent. The damage this sin causes is not just physical but spiritual, clouding the soul's vision of God and chaining it to the flesh. The first secret will strike hardest at those whose lives are built on the acquisition of material wealth and comfort. In a world where success is measured by financial gain, the first secret will force a radical reevaluation of priorities. You cannot serve both God and money, Matthew 6 verse 24. And yet, many Catholics are guilty of allowing material pursuits to dominate their lives. When the disaster comes, it will reveal how little value these things have in the face of eternity. Perhaps the most dangerous sin is lukewarmness, those who believe in God but live as though he does not exist. Lukewarm Catholics may attend church but do not live the gospel. They do not evangelize, they do not sacrifice, they do not prepare for the battle between good and evil. They exist in spiritual complacency, and as Christ warned, he will spit them out. The time for lukewarm faith is over. We must be hot or cold, fully devoted to God or fully against him. The first secret ties into the greater biblical prophecies that warn of a time of tribulation before the coming of Christ's reign. Jesus himself spoke of wars, natural disasters, and great calamities as the beginning of birth pangs. Matthew 24 verses 6 to 8. St. Paul warned that, the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 2, catching many unprepared. The first secret is the beginning of this time of purification, a moment of divine mercy that will separate the wheat from the chaff. In the book of Daniel, we are told of a time when many shall be purified, made white and refined, but the wicked shall do wickedly. Daniel 12 verse 10. This purification will not come without pain. But those who are open to God's grace will be transformed, made ready for the eternal kingdom. Those who refuse will face the consequences of their rejection of God's mercy. Now is the time to act. Our Lady has been pleading with us for decades, urging us to prepare for this moment of crisis. We can no longer afford to live in spiritual laziness. The first secret will shake the world, and only those who are prepared will withstand the storm. We must enter into battle, casting away the chains of sin that bind us to the earth. Go to confession regularly. Confess with true sorrow and a firm resolve to sin no more. Fast and pray for the conversion of souls. Do penance and make sacrifices for the salvation of others. Place your family under the protection of Mary by praying the rosary daily and live according to the gospel with radical faith. When the first secret is revealed, it will be too late to prepare. But those who have heeded Our Lady's call will walk through the fire and emerge purified, ready to enter the peace of Christ's reign. The time of grace is running out. Choose now whom you will serve. The choice is yours. Will you be among the one percent who find the narrow path to heaven? Or will you be counted among the many who chose the wide road to destruction? The first secret is not just a warning, it is a final call to conversion. Do not wait until it is too late. Prepare, repent, and believe, for the kingdom of God is at hand.